consequences. Now, here is Syria. Now, there is the Mediterranean, and uh, here is the Suez Canal, where a great deal of ship are aboard. Uh, there are pipelines that come across Turkey into Europe. But here is the place that uh, Putin is now claiming, I'm going to be in Syria. Now, here's the deal. Right next to Syria is Iraq. They have oil reserves of 140 billion barrels right next to Syria. Now, up from there is Iran with 157 billion barrels of oil. And down, of course, south of Iraq is Kuwait and then the Persian Gulf. So the oil flows down the Persian Gulf this way, and it goes out through the Straits of Hormuz that is choked right there by uh, Iran. So you've got 157 barrels. Now the big prize, of course, is Saudi Arabia, 268 billion barrels of oil. Now here, you've got the majority, 60, 70% of all the oil on the planet, right in this little area here. Now, the other place that can be controlled out of here, the oil will come down the Persian Gulf and then often it will go south of Oman and back up into what is called the Bab el Mandeb, which is Yemen. And it goes up the Red Sea and it would be transported to Europe through the Suez Canal, which is right here. Now, <clears throat> if Putin has control over Syria and then comes into Iraq and he's already got an alliance with Iran, he can force the Saudis into some kind of a concession. Now, up to this point, the Saudis have made a deal with America. They say, we're going to sell our oil to you but it has to be priced in dollars, which means that if, for example, Turkey wants oil or up farther into Russia, which has 80 billion barrels, if Russia wants to sell its oil on the world market, it has first to convert its rubles into dollars, and then people can buy oil. But once Saudi goes to Russia, or Iraq and Iran go to Russia, then all of a sudden the deal with the United States is off and our dollar is no longer supreme. We're talking about what it would take to choke off the uh, economic promise of pro pro progress of the whole European continent. And Putin it knows what he's dealing with. So if he has control over the Suez, he has control over the Straits of Hormuz, he has control over the, the Dab el Mandeb, he has control over all this oil, he will be the master of the universe. And he knows it. And he knows he can bring America to his knees if he gets that. Now that's what he's playing for. This little piece of land here, Syria, is where he is now going to be in control. He will have control of Syria, and along with it, any pipelines that go across Turkey, uh, the oil out of Iraq, the oil out of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the Persian Gulf, the, uh, uh, the Suez Canal, all this will be under his control. That's what he wants. He wants to take control of all of it, and that's how it will be played out. But it will come right out of Syria. Right now, he's got... He's got a naval base here on the edge of Syria. Uh, he has troops into Syria. He can now, of course, threaten Jordan. He can threaten Iraq. And of course, he's, his planes are actually incursing into Turkey. The Turks have complained about him violating their airspace, and he can move against them. All of this has tremendous prophetic significance if you read Ezekiel chapter 38. So that's where it all is. And that's the long game. So keep your eyes on what's happening. And But we're giving it to him by default without him having to fire a shot. He's taking all this over. And <clears throat> our president is advocating or abdicating control of this entire region, which at this point has been the dominant, uh, the United States has been the dominant player.